Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso and I'm excited to be here today to talk about a very hot topic. Um, if you thought that we were done recognizing revenue under topic 606 and we were good to go, implementation finished, not quite yet. So the FASB has put out an exposure draft related to topic 606, in particular for franchisors uh, and offering private company franchisors a practical expedient. This was foreshadowed in ASU 2020-05. Uh, if we go back and look, one of the reasons why they originally proposed a delay for revenue recognition was specifically for franchisors uh, because of this technical issue, a uh, difficulty in understanding the performance obligations in a franchise agreement, uh, in particular for smaller entities. And so um, they knew that this was coming. It was a project they were going to be tackling. And so they originally just proposed that delay for franchisors. Again, they expanded the delay in 2020-05 due to feedback, but this was really the impetus for the delay in RevRec. Uh, and so we're gonna dive on into what the proposal looks like. So this came out on September 21st, comments are due November 5th. Uh, and again, it is a practical expedient. Uh, they received a lot of feedback, especially from uh, franchisors that are startups or have a small number of franchises, um, that uh, there was a lot of cost and complexity in applying topic 606 to those initial franchise fees. So again, when we think about this, the uh, goal of 606 is to identify the performance obligations. And then based on that, you would then uh, decide when to recognize revenue. And the uh, when they looked at this, these um, there are a lot of different offerings within a pre-opening service, right? So those initial fees could be finding a location. It could be helping them get set up with vendors. And so uh, the question was this analysis um, and how they would go through this process. And so the cost and complexity was there. And so that level of effort required to account for the initial franchise fees um, was, you know, definitely going to be uh, somewhat difficult. So who is impacted? Uh, you can't be a public entity. So uh, this is only for um, entities that are not public business entities and that are within the scope of 952, which are franchisors. Um, and it applies to the entities that meet that definition of a franchise. And so we have that franchisor definition, uh, which is the party who grants business rights, the franchise, to the party, the franchisee, who will operate the franchise business. And so in this proposal, we're gonna have a practical expedient, right? The goal is to reduce cost and complexity. So we're gonna offer a, um, a practical expedient here about when and how we identify performance obligations. It would allow them to account for pre-opening uh, services as a single separate uh, performance obligation if they meet a predetermined list. So they have a predefined list and you have to meet just a couple other uh, conditions. If so, you would have a single performance obligation and it would be separate. And so it'd be a little bit easier for these items. And so you can account uh, for the pre-opening services as a single performance obligation if they're on this list. First, assistance with the selection of a site, very common uh, when we're opening up a new McDonald's or we're looking at, we're going to try to help find the site that's going to get the most traffic. Two, assistance in obtaining facilities and preparing the facilities for their intended use, financing, architectural, engineering, lease negotiation. Training the franchisee's personnel on, or the franchisee. Preparation and distribution of manuals, bookkeeping, record keeping, admin, uh, bookkeeping, IT and advisory services, including setting up their records and advising them about income, real estate and other taxes, and then inspection, testing and other quality control programs. So if you're in this predetermined list, we can consider it a single performance obligation. Now, there are some conditions here. Uh, the franchisor would uh, be required to assess the ongoing fees and the relationship of those fees to the ongoing services. Uh, they would be precluded from applying the expedient if it's not probable that the continuing fees will cover the continuing costs, right? So typically, if you think about these, there are some very large initial franchise fees uh, and then uh, smaller, uh, you know, continuing ones related to sales. If it's not probable that those continuing fees will cover the cost, then they, there is a prohibition on using the practical expedient. Now, if you've already adopted 606 as a private entity and a franchisor and you recognize them as separate performance obligation, that does not preclude you from adopting this practical expedient. Uh, so the timing of your adoption of 606, uh, whether you apply the deferral or not, does not impact the applicability. So you can actually go back and change it if you want, uh, as this has come out obviously after the original effective date of 606. All right, so as I said, this is a proposal. Uh, it is specifically for 
franchisors. Uh, so other private entities that have initial upfront fees like golf courses and other membership institutions are not included. Uh, there is a lot of question as to whether we could expand the scope of this or not. Um, but as you can see, it's a very niche response. Uh, and so and very specifically to for this particular industry. So it'd be interesting to see where we go on these responses. Uh, Faz, we would love to hear from you. Uh, so hopefully if you have any franchisors in your client base, or if you are a franchisor in a private entity, uh, they would love to hear some information from you. So that's it for today's blog. And I hope to see you on a future blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.